qawli. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you today? Good afternoon, how about you? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Okay, are you ready for the second part of Surah Al-Balad? Yes, inshallah. Inshallah. So today we are going to uh, continue from verses from Ayah um, 11. Until the end of the chapter, which is Ayah 30. Yes, 20, sorry, 20. This is a short chapter. And I believe we will um, we'll actually complete uh, the session uh, a bit faster than before. So before we do that, as usual, we are going to... Um, uh, go back to the previous section we have looked at last week, which is Ayah 1 to 10. So let's first see who would like to um, do some Tajweed recitation, inshallah. Any volunteers? Brother Yusuf, you want to, to open it to get started, inshallah? You can go ahead. Inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytani wajeen. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حيول بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد Brother Yusuf, sorry, uh, there is one ayah, uh, this one, number three. It should be, Wawalidin, Wawalidin, Wawalidin. Okay. Wawalidin. Yeah, I'll just change it into, uh, I'm going to make the font bigger, and I will change to Tajweed, so you can see it. Wawalidin, Wawalidin. Wawalidin, Wawalidin. لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد أيحسب أن لا يقدر عليه أحد يقول أهلكت مال اللبد أيحسب أن لم يراه أحد Okay, for these two we can make ibram, we can say allam, allam. So the noon is not heard, you know. Allam. Ayahsabu allam yaqadir. Oh, sorry. Ayahsabu allam yarahu ahad. So the noon is silent. It's actually merged uh, with the lam. Allam. Okay. Ayah, ayahsabu allam yarahu ahad. Alam Naja Allahu Ainai Wanisana Washapatai Wahataina Hunajatai. Okay, Jazakallah and Mashallah, brother. You're so very good. So here we also can make sure that we pronounce the noon clearly. So for instance, in Ayah uh, 8, Alam Naja Allahu Ainai. وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنِ وَهَدَيْنَاهُ النَّجَدَيْنِ Okay, mashallah. Good job, Brother Yusuf. Jazakallah khair. Excellent. Okay, so uh, we are going to continue with this, with this uh, chapter. And I will recite now um, Ayah 11 to 20. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ فَلَقْتَحَمَ الْعَقَبَةِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْعَقَبَةِ فَكُّ رَقَبَةِ أَوْ إِطْعَامٌ فِي يَوْمٍ ذِي مَسْغَبَةِ يَتِيمًا ذَا مَقْرَبَةِ أَوْ مِسْكِينًا ذَا مَتْرَبَةِ ثُمَّ كَانَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْمَرْحَمَةِ أولئك أصحاب الميمنة والذين كفروا بآياتنا هم أصحاب المشأمة عليهم نار مقصدة. Okay. 
it's a nice easy chapter to to recite and also i think uh for people who are beginning um in uh hip in memorization is also quite easy to memorize inshallah so uh, how about we start with the def with the tafsir now explanation of these um different verses so looking at the first verse we're going to do today which is verse 11 Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the previous verses, meaning, um, let's see, um, verses 8, 9, and 10, He is reminding us of His blessings upon us, uh, meaning that He has provided us with two eyes to see, He has provided us with uh, speech, uh, which is um, embodied or symbolized by the tongue and the two lips. And he also gave us the insight of distinguishing between right and wrong, right? So he says to us now in this verse, if only they had attempted the challenging path of goodness instead. So therefore, first of all, we need to remember that the people who are addressed here are the disbelievers. So this verse is talking to Allah is blaming the disbeliever. He is not talking to the believers, of course, right? And he is saying to the disbelievers, if only those disbelievers had attempted uh, the path called Al-Aqaba. So after these blessings, we have, Allah says, we have given man these blessings. We have given him eyesight. We have given him the ability to express himself through language and speech. Did he even bother? Based on all these blessings, did he, did he even bother to take that path of difficulty? And, and this path of difficulty, um, why is it a path of difficulty? Because this, this path of difficulty is the path that leads to success, right? Um, why? Because it's full of challenges, right? It's, it's a steep, difficult path full of challenges, full of hardships, full of self-discipline, self-regulation. Uh, and as we say, the biggest jihad is jihad al-nafs, right? The jihad of the self. But this path actually will lead to Jannah. This difficult path will lead to Jannah. So the term Aqaba, literally, if we trans and translate it into Arabic, literally, it's it refers to, um, you know, when you have two mountains, and between those two mountains, there is like a, a road. And this road is bumpy, a bumpy, difficult road to reach between two, two mountains. That is literally the meaning of al aqaba in Arabic. It's, uh, uh, it means that symbolically it's a place which is difficult to reach, right? But not impossible. Um, and it's, it's the path of life. Actually, life is not easy. We all know that. And this should remind us, in fact, of another verse which is found in the same chapter that we are studying today, that we have already uh, seen the same theme where Allah has, has actually created us to go through hardships. So when he says to us in verse chapter, verse four of the same chapter, if we just go back uh, from last week, Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانِ فِي كَبَدْ Indeed, we have created humankind in constant struggle. Right in a in a difficult path of struggle, a state of constant struggling, and at the same time, Allah says, Subhanahu wa Taala, in this type of path that Allah has put us on, if we choose a path which is actually difficult to reach, will lead us. It will lead us to the success, the ultimate success, which is jannah, uh, and um, and the next verse is ayah 12, right? Ayah 12 says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَنْ لَعَقَبَ Now this formula is a very uh, frequent formula, um, you know, in, in, in the Qur'an. For example, in Surah Al-Qadr, uh, uh, right? إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ means and what will make you realize what this thing referred to is. So when Allah uses this formula 
Now he is talking about al aqaba which is this path, right? This challenging path. So when Allah uses this formula, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ First of all, he is magnifying the, sta the status of this path, meaning that this path is quite a high path. It's another level. It has a glorified status. It's a difficult path. It's difficult to reach, but this is the whole, all of it is for the sake of reaching Jannah, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ and what will make you realize what attempting the challenging path is? Now, some scholars say that uh, the idea of al-aqaba here, which is mentioned in verses 11 and 12, um, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created Adam, alayhi salam, right? And he has created Adam in Jannah. And when Adam, uh, alayhi salam, disobeyed Allah, he downgraded him or oh, he made him descend to earth. And Allah now is asking Adam to return back to Jannah. And um, in fact, this return to Jannah through this aqaba, al aqaba, this path will require effort, work, sacrifice, and so on and so forth. Understand? So this is an allegory actually. And Ahlul Alim says that whenever this formula is mentioned, وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell us what it is. So if Allah says, and what will make you realize, in the next verse, immediately after, Allah will tell us what it is. And I will show you this in the next few verses. So um, Allah will actually require us to go through this hardship to reach that level so that he upgrades us to go to Jannah. But if we refuse, and if we don't want to take that upward path, which is steep and difficult, um, he will, of course, down, downgrade us to an even even lower level. So that is, you know, brothers and sisters, that's why, um, you know, work that has as its reward, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in it some effort, some discomfort. So uh, reaching that higher path will necessarily require some effort, some discomfort. It's not an easy path. Okay, in ayah 13 now we have the, res the response to this question or to this, uh, uh, you know, statement by Allah when he says, what will make you realize what attempting the challenging path is? And I told you that whenever Allah Azza wa uses the formula, وَمَا He will make us know what it is. So here he starts to tell us what it is. What is an aqaba? Attempting that path is fakuraqaba. So verse 13. It is to free a slave. So in this verse and the next one, and the next ones, Allah is illustrating for us uh, some ways to attempt this path. How are we going to be able to attempt it, this path? This is an illustration. How are we going to do it? So we have first fakuraqaba. And the translation says, it is to free a slave. And by the way, uh, as far as Tajweed is concerned, we have uh, this Qira'a, Fakku Raqaba, but we also have a recitation which makes it into a third person, Fakka Raqaba, he has freed a slave. Fakka Raqaba with a Fatha on the Ka instead of Fakku Raqaba. And then here's another way, number uh, ayah number 14. Here's another way to actually reach that path, which is mentioned in verse 14. <laughs> or to give food in times of famine. Now, let's understand what this means. Uh, one way to reach that path, to, to get to that difficult path, which leads to Jannah, is to feed the people who need to be fed. Uh -huh. But when, even more rewarding is when we actually ourselves are in times of need or when it is time where food is scarce. So when there is a famine, for example, when there is a need, everyone has a need for food, those people who have attempted that challenging path, which is al aqaba they are actually generous at that time. So 
this tells us, uh, you know, that those people, if you actually attempt the difficult path, is that you are giving them from the food that you yourself uh, are in need of. Now, this is the example of the true believers. To feed people when you yourself are in a need to be fed. So look at this um, example. It's actually mentioned a few times in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, if I take you uh, to Surah Al-Hashr, I have prepared it in advance. So we have first, so let's go to Surah Al-Insan first. In Surah Al-Insan, Allah says in uh, verse 8, chapter 76, verse 8, وَيُطَيْمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا And those people, the people of good, they give food, they give food despite their desire for it. عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ So in spite of the fact that they love the food that they are giving because they need it, they are giving it to the poor, the orphan, and the captive. Right? So this is Al-Aqaba the difficult path. They are doing it in spite of the fact that they themselves are in need of it. And there's another example of the same idea here, which is mentioned in Surah Al-Hashr. Uh, I have highlighted it here, but I will just show you uh, the verse, the whole verse, uh, which says, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَأُوا الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِمَّا أُوتُوا And here's the part which talks about that. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُبْحَ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So those people, they give the immigrants talking about people who migrated al muhajirin from Mecca to Medina, the people who welcome them, they give from the food and they give the immigrants preference over themselves, subhanAllah. Even though they may be in need, right? Themselves, they are in need and they are giving, right? And here's a comment, and whoever is saved from the selfishness of their own souls, everyone is selfish, right? It is they who are truly successful. So going back to Surah Al-Aqa, Surah Al-Balad. So here's the second example, or the second illustration of how one can attempt that path of difficulty to give food in times of famine when everybody is in need of that food. So the same here for Tajweed, just as a side comment. Um, so here we said, and here we can say So this one is either recited Another qira'a Which is um, you know Legitimate qira'a is Okay In ayah number 15 Who are the people Who should be uh, Are eligible or entitled To that generosity so this first, first category of people who is entitled to the feeding and to the donations to an orphaned relative. And here, why does Allah Azza wa Jal tell us to feed the orphaned relative? Now, let me explain to you. Because um, this orphan, it is even more preferred if the orphan is related to us, is close to us by family ties, you know, because the ajr is even higher, as you said here in this verse. Uh, imagine, in fact, when you giving to the orphan who is related to you, uh, you are fulfilling two good deeds, okay? The first good deed is the ajr of sadaqah by feeding or giving a donation. And the second is the Azure of Silatul Rahim, the preservation of the wombs or the family ties. So here, this verse says to an orphaned relative. Okay. And another category of people who are entitled to these um, this generosity is mentioned in verse 16. 
أو مسكينا ذا متربة or to a poor person in distress. Okay, here a poor person is miskin and he is so miskin that he is uh, in matraba. Matraba, what is matraba? Some people say that this matraba word comes from the word turab. Turab. And do you know what turab is, anyone? Let me see if my brothers and sisters know. Do you brothers and sisters know what turab is? Turab is the is actually the the soil, you know, uh, the soil, the earth. So meaning that he is so poor that he is at the level of turab. Turab means the soil, the, the, the earth, the soil, the floor. So this showing how intense this poverty is. Exactly that type of person should be entitled, the most entitled, the most entitled to the generosity are those people. And by the way, um, these two categories that we have mentioned here in verse 15 and 16, we have al-yatim and al-miskin, right? You remember we have already mentioned them before? Who remembers? Who can remember when did we mention them? So we said they are coming together in these two verses as they came before, they were mentioned before in another verse that we have studied. Does, does anyone remember? So we are studying right now Suratul uh, Suratul uh, Balad, right? And before Suratul Balad, what is the chapter just before? Chapter eighty-nine. You remember Suratul Fajr, right? Now in Suratul Fajr, if you remember well, brothers and sisters, there is mention of uh, the orphan and the poor. So if you look at the screen, it says. So in fact, those two categories are also mentioned before in the previous chapter we have studied Surah Al-Fajr, meaning those two categories of people are very, very um, entitled or in the top priority for those people who we should be the most generous to. Okay? Okay, brothers and sisters, remember that, right? So we continue, if we kind of recap a little bit, just quickly to put our ideas back in order. What is Allah telling us? He's telling us, I have given you my blessings. I have given you the present of eyesight that you can look at the world. And it's a ni'mah, right? It's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I also gave you the ability to express yourself through your tongue, your mouth, and being able to, uh, you know, uh, just vocalize your ideas, your thoughts, express yourself, which is a human quality, right? We have that ability, which is a present from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to express ourselves. You know, like for instance, we look at the, the, the babies, the infants, they are shouting, they are crying. They don't, at that stage, we don't know what, what is wrong. If they could tell us what is wrong, they will talk. But that comes later. And once they start to talk, that's the blessing that Allah has uh, given us as humans to be able to talk about everything in detail, about uh, describing things, but describing our inner feelings. So those are two presents from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then he says, even though I have given you these, you haven't even attempted, oh, disbelievers, right? This is the audience addressed. You haven't attempted to take that path of difficulty, which actually leads you to the ultimate reward, right? And then if you take that path, you have two or four, you have a few ways to achieve that path. One way is to free the slave. The second way is to feed um, when you are in times of famine, when you are mostly in need. And who are the people you are feeding? So it's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is specifying verse by verse from general to specific. How can you get that path? You have one way is to free a slave. Another way is to feed or to be generous in times of difficulty. And then another parenthesis opened by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are the most entitled for those? generosities one is the orphaned relative and the second one 
is the poor or distressed person or the person is in most and the most flagrant state of poverty and then here Allah gives us uh, the verse verse 17 this is a very important verse because you can consider this verse to be a shot or a condition now let's let's first read this verse ثُمَّ كَانَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْمَرْحَمَةِ And above all, above all, to be one of those who have faith and urge each other to perseverance and urge each other to compassion. Now, we need to understand what this verse means, brothers and sisters. First of all, these um, deeds that the believer does, well, I have actually uh, said believer, but I should first say, these deeds that one commits to, they cannot be validated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless we have the condition of, of Iman. Of Iman. So the shart, the important conditions, is that in order for you to have your good deeds accepted, you first need to have the condition of Iman, of belief. So unless your good deeds are accompanied by the condition of belief or to have faith, uh, it will be rejected. Okay. And then another deed, another condition is to have patience and to also encourage each other by being compassionate. So sabr is also a very important condition as we see here. Passion, uh, patience and compassion towards the people who are in need. So it means that, brothers and sisters, just to, for the sake of repetition, that the actions that I mentioned earlier, by right, feeding the poor, being generous, also uh, compassionate to the orphan, must, must be consistent with the, um, the heart. The heart has to believe first, so we have to have Iman. And we have two stories from the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, from the biography of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, of people, two people who are very generous. One of them got his, uh, will have his deeds accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and one of them will not have his deeds accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because one is a believer and one is a disbeliever. So let me tell you a bit more. And interestingly enough, these two people, these two characters, are mentioned in uh, both of them in the hadith, is mentioned in Sahih Muslim. So you can find it. So first first person is called uh, uh, Hakim ibn Hizam. Hakim ibn Hizam. So here is the hadith. Let me show you first the hadith. So we can read it together. So good deeds before conversion to Islam. So what is the story of uh, Hakim ibn Hizam? It's summarized in this hadith. I'm going to read it for you. Hakim ibn Hizam reported uh, that he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said to the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him. Uh, what do you think of the acts of worship I did in the time of ignorance? So in times of jahiliyyah, pre-Islamic pre times, he used to make good deeds, good acts, feeding people, you know, being generous to people, to the orphan, and so on, and so forth. So he asked the uh, the Prophet Sallallahu will I get anything from them? And the Prophet said, you have embraced Islam with the good you previously did. So when you accepted Islam, those good deeds that you did before Islam, were also validated or accepted, subhanAllah. So you, you see this brother and sister, Islam is a condition, is a shart, iman, faith is a condition for the good deeds uh, to be accepted. So you remember this man, he's called Hakim ibn Hizam. And then another uh, character is called Abdullah ibn Jud'an. So I have actually um, found the, uh, the hadith, but I copied it and pasted it for you to see. I made it a bit bigger. Now, 
His story, uh, he actually died before the Prophet ﷺ started his mission. So here um, in this hadith, uh, Aisha, Umm al Mu'min, our mother, uh, عنها, she asked about him. So his name is Abdullah ibn Jud'an, and she uses just ibn Jud'an. And by the way, the, the reason why uh, Aisha radiallahu anha asks about him is because he's from the same qabila, the same tribe as her, is Taym, qabila Taym or Banu Taym. So she said to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, indeed Ibn Jud'an used to provide food for the people and he would be hospitable to his guests. So will any of that benefit him on the day of resurrection? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said no. Indeed, on no day did he ever say, oh my Lord, forgive me my sins on the day of recompense, meaning he never uttered the word of Shahada and also never recognized uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his creator. So in Arabic, this part is the part that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa replies, he says, La yanfa'uhu, meaning the good deeds will not benefit him. إِنَّهُ لَمْ يَقُلْ يَوْمًا رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي خَطِيئَةِ يَوْمَ الدِّينِ He never said, Oh my Lord, forgive me my sins on the day of recompense. So here we have the example of two people. One of them, both of them do, did these good acts before they entered Islam. Right? Both of them. But one died upon disbelief and one became a Muslim. So if we go back to this verse, and we read it, and above all, to be one of those who have faith. So meaning that the faith should be the condition for our deeds to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, and then in ayah 18, أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَ Those people that were mentioned here by the previous verses that do good to redeem themselves, they are among the people of the right side. People of the right. Al Maymana. Al Yameen. Ashabul Yameen. This in another verse is Ashabul Yameen. Ashabul Maymana. The right side. The people of the right. Okay. And then Allah now is telling us about the other party in ayah 19 and 20. As for those who deny our signs, kafaru. بِآيَاتِنَا هُمْ هُمْ أَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَ They are the people of the left, left side. So uh, this is the other, the other rank, the people from the left side. How about them? Allah says in the last verse of this chapter, عَلَيْهِمْ نَارٌ مُؤْصَدًا The fire will be sealed over them. مُؤْصَدَ مُؤْصَدَ means that it's closed, it seals itself. Meaning there's no escape, there's no air that goes in, and there's no air that goes out. It's totally sealed, the fire. And that is their well-deserved salary. So here we conclude this uh, chapter, which is a short chapter with short verses. And inshallah, first we are going to, in a moment, uh, see if you have any questions. And then next week, inshallah, we are going to start a new chapter which uh, is Surah Al-Shams, the sun. وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا Okay, so next week we look forward to that new chapter of Surah Al-Shams, inshallah. Now, let's see, do you have any questions about this chapter? Anything that was not clear, which I'd like, maybe you'd like to me to uh, further explain? Um, I'll just open the floor for questions now, inshallah. Uh, if I can ask, brother. Yes, of course you can. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, related with the previous surah Al Fajr is mentioned in mm -hmm. Ayah 15. So let me check. Mm. Uh, so if a person will have their own testing, maybe it'll be like that. Uh -huh. And then so no, with, no, no. with the good, with the I mean with the fortune also they will be tested and we'll so with the like a fortune, they will be tested also. They have yeah. their own path to reach the channel. 
Is yes, that... yes. So, so just to recap on those two verses, Allah says to us that, in fact, this dunya is not a criterion to evaluate Allah's pleasure or displeasure, displeasure with us. This dunya and what it gives us of money, of, you know, riches, wealth, when someone looks at that, it should not fool us into belief that because we have the wealth, because we have the money and we are in a good state, that Allah is necessarily pleased with us. And the opposite is true too, that it's not because Allah has not given us this wealth that he is displeased with us. So it is not a criterion at the end of the day, right? The criterion is Al-Iman and what we do with that wealth, right? What we do with it. So uh, specifically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is here telling us what you have you done as far as giving to the orphan. And the second category of people. What do you need to do is, did you actually, were you actually generous in feeding the poor? So you see, this is kalla, absolutely not. In fact, you are not even gracious to the orphan and you do not urge one another to feed the poor. So these should be our priorities. al yatim and Al-Miskeen. And they are both mentioned also in this chapter that we are studying today. So verse 17 and 18 mentioned al yatim and Al-Miskeen, which are also mentioned uh, in uh, verse 15 and 16 of this chapter from today, right? Yatiman aw miskinan. So in fact, it tells us how, how high in the levels of priorities these should be entitled to our generosity. Did I answer your question for, for well or is it something else you are were asking about? Yes. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could we have more questions? Any anyone else would like to ask another question or to make a comment? Today we are four, inshallah. We actually um, can take that chance to ask more if you want. Okay, then okay. The, if you if you want, you can ask later. We can actually uh, start by doing the tajweed now. Could you read um, again, brother, about uh, Ayah huh? 17, please? Uh, Ayah 17. From this chapter, right? Yes, from all that. Do you want me to read it? No, to repeat again with the, uh, the meaning the tafsir, of right? Yeah, the tafsir. Yeah, of course. Uh -huh. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now, you have two people or two categories you have to be generous with. And if you do that, you will reach that path of aqaba because that is the the that one is one is one of the ways to get to the difficult path to achieve the success. And then Allah says, in addition and above all, the most important is that for you to have your deeds, your good deeds accepted, you must have iman. You must have faith. Faith enables you to have those deeds accepted. If you do not have faith, those deeds will be rejected. Right, you can come with a mountain of good deeds, of you know, amal salihat, salihat. But in fact, because you haven't, um, you don't have iman, you don't really have those validated. In addition to that, as a Muslim, you need to urge each other, tawasal, meaning give each other advice or give each other encouragement to be patient, sabr and also to be compassionate, right, al-marham. Have compassion towards each other and have patience towards each other. These are two qualities of the believers. As-sabr wal-marhama. So as-sabr, patience, and al-marhama, compassion. Being compassionate, right? Two ingredients that will make your iman or your deeds even more excellent. And we are enjoining each other. Wasiya, tawasa means to give each other advice. Give each other advice about patience. Give each other advice. Enjoin each other about compassion. Right? Because the person who doesn't have that in their heart is very hard for them to feel for those people who are in need, right? SubhanAllah. May Allah put that in our hearts, inshallah. Amen. Put more sabr and put more marhamah in our hearts, inshallah, in your
And then those are the people, those are the companions of the right side, Ashab al Mayman. Right, those are the people who are characterized by these traits. Well, yeah, come. Okay, so um, how about we do some Tajweed? Uh, 11 to the end of this verse, or this chapter, sorry. Anyone? Any volunteers? Would you like to try, Sister Bonita? Yes. Inshallah. You can do it. So, A11 until the end of the chapter, Sean. Okay, from 11 to 20. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فلقتها ما العقبه وما أدراك ما العقبه فك ركبه أو إطعام في يوم ذي مسجبة يتيما ذا مقربة أو مسكينا ذا متربة ثم كان من الذين آمنوا وتواصوا بالصبر وتواصوا بالصبر وتواصوا بالمرحمة أولئك أصحاب المشأمة أولئك أصحاب المشأمة والذين كفروا بآياتنا هم أصحاب المشأمة عليهم نار مؤسودة ما شاء الله جزاك الله خير good good very good sister all right brothers and sisters that's all I have for you today inshallah please remember to uh, train yourself and I always like to urge you you know regardless of how busy or how you know you know we are all busy <laughs> Please take some time to do some some hith, some uh, memorization of the Quran. Keep the Quran as your companion on a daily basis. You know, Inshallah. there is no better companion than the Quran. Subhanallah. Just take your time. Just take of your time. You know, it will give you such peace and solace. You know, you, you just read the Quran or maybe try attempt attempt to memorize one verse a day, two verses a day. Three verses a day. How many verses you can? Just try. Please try. Okay? Just do this favor to yourself. And, sure. and incorporate it in your daily routine, you know? Just have, I don't know, like have a small notebook and say, okay, I have uh, five chapters I know. I'm going to review them. Now I'm reciting, I'm memorizing the sixth chapter. I think many of you know more than that. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> right? MashaAllah. Just learn and just do your daily. We call this wirid, meaning your review of your chapters. It's such a peaceful time of the day, you know. Uh, and just uh, continue to memorize, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. I will stop talking, I think. Jazakumullah khair. So I will just conclude with the closing dua. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha ilaha Thank you so much. Inshallah, I'll see you next week. Inshallah. And we will continue. I will continue uh, probably uh, during the month of Ramadan if you are willing to, to do that. I'll be happy to do that. Inshallah. All right. We'll just uh, sign off here. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Wa alaikum. 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 W